to chat about the new study that came out a few weeks ago in The Lancet that claims that no amount of alcohol is good for your health. Now, this contradicts many, many studies done on brain health that show that one to two glasses of red wine can be beneficial to your brain health. Many neurologists actually promote drinking red wine. So I wanted to dive in even further instead of just looking at the news reports. So I read the actual study. It's titled Alcohol Use and Burden for 195 Countries and Territories from 1990 to 2016, a systematic analysis for the Global Burden of Disease Study in 2016. So here's what they found. Globally, alcohol use is the seventh leading cause of deaths. And I think we can all agree that sounds about right. You have accidents and liver failure and cancer. They're all attributable to alcohol. But to say that very moderate use counterdicts many, many studies that have been done. So I really wanted to find out what they're really saying, since we know how the news can sometimes spin things. So in the end, here was their conclusion. Although alcohol has been shown in some studies to help cardiovascular health, the overall effect of alcohol hurt more than it helped. Basically, the, the negative effects overrid the positive effects. Now, taking that into account, they didn't compare any of the, the diseases to brain health studies, only cardiovascular studies, diabetes, and 23 other related outcomes. I really wanted to see the data for myself. So what's really interesting to me is that they looked at this from a global standpoint. They looked at current drinkers from their definition as someone who drinks one or more drinks in the past year compared to people who drank nothing for the last year. Now that's a very broad definition of a current drinker. The mean alcohol consumption was 0.73 for a woman and 1.7 for a man globally a day. So this takes in all of, in account all the people that drink a lot and those that don't drink very much at all. And they also take into account countries that don't drink, like the Middle East and Africa, or at least very little. And now the thing is that those countries have shorter lifespans than we do. And I don't know that you can actually compare those. So we know that if you're 85 in this country, you have a one in three chance of dying from or getting Alzheimer's. Most of the people in those countries don't live long enough to get Alzheimer's or heart disease or anything like that. So I focused on just data from the US to simplify the process. In the US, 40 to 59% of females are drinkers and 60 to 79% of men drink. Women drink on average one to two drinks and men drink on average two to three drinks a day. Now, when I looked at the data in heart disease and diabetes, diabetes for women only, and stroke actually decreased as people got older and drank. Again, there was no comparison of brain health like dementia or Alzheimer's. Many other diseases had increased incidences as people got older and drank. So this is how they got the results. But what if you look a little bit deeper? They looked at things like unintentional injuries, self-harm, interpersonal violence, alcohol use disorders, and transport injuries as part of the 23 effects from alcohol, which is odd to me actually, because if you're a low to moderate drinker, our studies show that one to two glasses a day, which is a moderate drinker, a little less for, for women, I don't know that you're gonna do self-harm, have interpersonal violence, have alcohol use disorders, or transport injuries. Now, I'm sure all of those are possible, but I'm also pretty sure the odds of those are significantly lower with only one or two drinks for most people. So if you take those out of the equation, the tables get flattened a little bit more. Now, the overall risk of one drink a day has an almost indistinguishable more risk on all measured diseases as zero. Two drinks has about a 1.5% more relative risk on all diseases, but still extremely small when zero is a one relative risk. So the bottom line is yes, zero drinks is best, but one drink has very little effect on the overall weighted risks. Now my main concern with this study is they didn't look at the people themselves. They looked at how much alcohol was purchased 
and then averaged it over the drinkers in the region. What I would like to see is a study done on actual people that have strictly just one or two, or maybe even one or two a week compared to zero. I think the findings would be different. I also think that they are blaming a lot of the diseases on alcohol alone, which is really too far of a jump for me. Those that drink more are more likely to have other health risks like being overweight and having a hard time sleeping. Those kind of go hand in hand and those contribute greatly to the health risks in these studies. I'd also like to see them look at wine only, especially red wine. Now, beer has really never been shown to do any good in any study I know of, but in saying all of this, I'm going, I'm not trying to go out and say, go have a drink. Actually, quite the contrary. I do find that most people, including myself on occasion, have a hard time sticking to just one or two glasses of wine. I do indulge a little bit more on occasion, and that probably does do harm to my body. For those that can't just stick to one or two glasses a day, or even a few weeks, then maybe zero is the best answer. But for the rest of us who enjoy a glass of wine on occasion, I don't feel too bad about it. Our relative risk of living is longer than higher alcohol consumption. And most people I know want to live a long, healthy life. So with that, go enjoy your weekend. Don't let these studies scare you, but do please drink in moderation. Of course, always have a designated driver. I, in Sweden, there's a zero tolerant policy, tolerant, tolerance policy, which means you cannot drive with even one drink. And I think that is a good policy to reduce a lot of these health risks that we have. So go have a great, good weekend and enjoy your glass of red wine if you want. Thanks.